I'm Peter Fogarty from the New South Wales Soil Knowledge Network. This video will show you how to achieve good track drainage and in particular it will show you how to build a good diversion bank. Good track drainage will keep erosion to a minimum. That means that the track surface will be much easier to drive on and it will also keep the export of sediment into the watercourses nearby to a minimum. Unsealed tracks and trails are used for a multitude of purposes. This video should be of interest to landholders and agencies who are involved in using and managing unsealed tracks and trails through the Australian landscape. Ashley and I are discussing what to do to manage the runoff on this track better than what's happening at the moment. Ashley, we've got a quite a substantial windrow here mm -hmm. that seems to be preventing the runoff getting away onto the hill slope. What do you think we should do with that? Take that windrow out and bring it back onto the track surface and we can utilise that material further down into a rollover and thus that allows for, for side fall and, and water and sediment to drain off, off your track surface here without confining it to the track surface all the time. And you can see here that we've got a, a good area for the runoff to yeah. disperse and to soak into the soil. Yeah. yeah. So it means that the drainage bank further down the track doesn't get overloaded. The key things that go into bank construction are that we have at least 50 centimetres of freeboard so that we have good storage in behind the bank. We have enough volume so that we can ramp it up over and down to allow for easy access of um, not just four wheel drives but larger vehicles such as um, the larger category fire vehicles, firefighting vehicles. Then the other point in the design is that the water is directed onto a part of the hill slope that allows for it to disperse and to soak in. We don't want it going into a drainage line where it's concentrated and doesn't have the opportunity to infiltrate. Ashley, what do you think about this? This bank is well and truly worn down, isn't it? Yeah. The runoff is going over the bank and keeping on going down the track. What do you think we need to do here? As we were going to do further up there is bring the windrow off that track there, work that material down towards the rollover here and utilise it to help out with the construction of this rollover to give us more freeboard and utilise the material that's also here which is sediment which is built up and that will allow us to finish this rollover off to the circumstances where it will hold water and divert water out to a safer area. Ashley, what do you think the problem is with this bank here? Well, first off there, we still haven't got much freeboard on your bank at all. The uh, sediment has moved down into the bank itself, into the channel. Without a side fall on it, you get, you, you'll get this problem of um, water holding into the channel. And as vehicles drive through it, it becomes a, a bog situation. So to allow for all that, when you build these rollovers, we like to get as much freeboard into our bank for vehicles to go over and for the longevity of your bank. But also we like a little bit of side fall in your channel so you don't get this problem here. And which goes out onto a naturally vegetated area to prevent further erosion. So this bank gives us a good indication of the principles really that we need to keep in mind when we're building a cross bank. The first one is that we need to aim for about 50 centimetres of freeboard to give us good storage and to prevent overtopping. We want to have a bit of a cross fall grade to allow for drainage behind the bank so we don't end up with it getting bogged up. Second principle is that we want to have enough volume in the bank to ensure that it's drivable and that the grades coming into the bank and then over the back of the bank are trafficable to both four-wheel drives and to larger vehicles. 
And then the final and very important principle is that where the bank is draining to, where the water is running off onto the hill slope, that it's not concentrating but spreading out. It's dispersing and therefore giving the opportunity to the runoff to soak into the soil. So you can see now we have at least half a metre of freeboard to the top of the bank. So we have good capacity for water to run down the track, get caught in the bank and then directed off into the, onto the hill slope for infiltration into the ground. The finished product is a big improvement on what was here before. With constructing the bank, I know it's not always possible to have good soil moisture in the material that you're using but here we just had a bit of rain last week which has helped greatly for the compaction of the rollover. Uh, if you notice here Pete where I started on this rollover here I, I, I use the sill entry into the vegetation as my guide and I go off that with the blade that allows me to go in yep. to the drainage and keep the, the channel level so I'm using the left corner tip as a guide and that allows me to put it over so everything's uniform there. Yep. You can't start over here and come this way because you've got no guide. You end up being lower here than, than out there. Yeah. And this causes pondage this here. So we always work from our sill in, in to allow for your drainage in your bank to be all equal and that'll just drain out of there without being ponding water. Ponding water is is more serious than not having enough freeboard because mm -hmm. it end up bogging up and it holds water in there all the time and it just destroys your, your drainage control bank. I hope this video has given you a good insight into how to go about getting your track drainage right. If you get it right in the first place you'll save a lot of money and it will be there to be used for a long time into the future.